and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, The Voice of Death. Sam? Hmm? Yes, oh, Annie? You almost finished reading your paper? Yes, Annie. Time to go to bed, ain't it? Yes, Annie. Better make sure all the windows are shut. Sounds like a real mean storm coming up. Yes, Annie. Sam. Hmm? Yes, Annie. Did you hear that? What? Y- you hear it? Sound just like little kittens. Yeah. Well, I wonder where they come from. Well, the poor things outdoors on a night like this. Sam, will you go out and find them? Go on, will you? No, Annie, you don't... Just listen to them little critters. Ain't you got no heart, Sam? Oh, all right. Where's my raincoat? Oh, uh, here you are. I'll set up a little box for them by the fire. All right, all right, all right now. Stop your crying, kittens. I'm coming. Just wait. I'll eat up a bit of milk, too. <laughs> you see him, Sam? No, not yet. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Annie, I don't... Sam! Sam, what's wrong? What's in the name of the Sam! Sam, what is it? Sam, what happened? Sam, blood. You're all covered with blood. Rose. Lee. Toma. Ola. Sam, how could kittens do... Sam! He's dead. Well, I must say, Lamont, that we picked a fine day to go visiting. <laughs> you want no secret, Margot? I'm your man. This whole thing is just an effect. Huh? A fact, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh. People always look for a mysterious atmosphere in the Louisiana bio, so uh, Mother Nature very obligingly provides it for them. Oh, I see. Well, I must say that sunshine wouldn't make a great deal of difference. I don't see how it could ever penetrate those moss-laden trees. <laughs> much further to go, Lamont? I don't think so. Arthur told me the house was exactly five miles from that last bridge. Why in the world would anyone want to live way off like this? Well, the house has been in Arthur Whittington's family for many, many years. And Arthur, being a rather peculiar chap, I, I don't suppose it bothers him in the least. No. Well, forgive me for appearing dull, but I don't get it. Well, Margot, it's a, it's a long story. It began in college when we took a medical course together. I guess I was the only person in the whole school who really understood him. Well, why was that? Well, Arthur was a brilliant student, but he was also a highly sensitive lad, always imagining that people were making fun of him, laughing at him behind his back. Was there any reason for that? Well, yes, there was. It was his voice. He had the harshest sounding voice I'd ever heard. It cracked, it rasped. He did everything that a voice shouldn't do. Really? In fact, it was his voice that made him leave medical school. I don't follow you, Lamont. Well, it all happened one day in class. Arthur had prepared a paper, an excellent paper that he had to read aloud to the student body. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please. You may proceed, Mr. Whittington. Uh, Mr. Whittington, where are you going? Wait, why are you leaving the classroom? Well, he threw down his paper and walked right out of the room. Poor boy. I've never heard of him since. But we've corresponded. And uh, then, as you know, when he learned that we were down here in Louisiana fishing, he got in touch with me and invited us out to see him. Well, that goes a long way toward explaining his living out here so far from civilization. You know, he still must be sensitive about that horrible voice. Yes, I'm sure he is. But remember, we mustn't do anything to call attention to it. Oh, heavens, no, I wouldn't. Come on, there's something right ahead on the road. Uh, yes, Marjorie, yes, I see it. Uh, this rain on the windshield is hard to... Wait, it's some sort of a fence. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of the line. And not a house in sight. Mm. 
Well, there seems to be a sign on it. We'd better get out and investigate. Button up that raincoat, Margo. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. It's getting so dark, you can hardly make the sign out. Here's your flashlight, Lamont. Oh, thank you. There we are. <laughs> Whittington Hall. Keep out. That's a nice welcome. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that doesn't mean that. Well, looks like we'll have to walk down this path to get to the house. I think I can just see it through the trees. Hmm. Come on, did you hear that? Yes. Sounds like little kittens. Oh, the poor things out in weather like this. I'm going to find them. They seem to be under that bush. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Margo, kitty, you'll get so climbing around in that underbrush. Well, I'll have them, Jack. Oh, Margo! Margo, what in the name Dog, giant dog! Get down, down you, get down! Get down! Right away, Margo! This car will take care of Get down, you! Get out! Yeah. They're running away. Margo, are you all right? Yes, I... I guess so. They didn't hurt you? No. No, one of them ripped my coat, that's all. Come on, I don't understand. They sounded like little kittens. Yes, yes, I know. Well, what do you make of it, Lamont? I don't know. One thing is certain. We're going back to the car and get my revolver. Lamont, I've never seen such an eerie-looking house in my life. The broken shutters and the crumbled stairs. Those unpainted walls. Don't tell me that this is the Whittington Mansion. I guess it is, Margo. Yeah, we were back in New Orleans. Well, if you'd rather we... Oh, well, no, we've come this far. Go ahead and knock at the door. I promise you, if a ghost answers, I won't be surprised. No, frankly, no will I. Are you going to tell Mr. Whittington about the dog? Of course. Why not? Well, it may sound a bit strange in the telling... Dogs that sound like little kittens. Well, he may know who's. What do you want? Oh, uh, good evening. We'd like to see Mr. Whittington, please. What is it about? He's expecting. There are no guests expected here tonight. Well, if you'll say that Miss Lane and Mr. Cranston are I here, tell I... you that Mr. Whittington is not seeing anyone tonight. Yes, I'm... sir. Yes, sir. What is it? People here, Mr. Arthur. Oh, Arthur. It's Lamont Cranston. Lamont, come in. Come in. Yes, sir, you old fool. I told you we were expecting Mr. Cranston. I'm sorry, Mr. Arthur. Come in, sir, please. Well, Lamont, I'm glad you were able to come. It's good seeing you again. Well, thank you, Arthur. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Miss Lane. Uh, this is Arthur Whittington, Margo. How do you do, How Ms. do you Lane? do, Mr. Whittington? Well, come take off those wet coats. Thank yes, you. we're more or less swimming in these. Uh, Jasper, show Miss Lane and Mr. Cranston into the living room. There's a fire there, Lamont. You can dry off. All the comforts of home. <laughs> yes. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll go and arrange for dinner. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You will come this way, please. Thank you. Lamont, this place is just as scary inside as it was outdoors. Yes, I uh, see what you mean. Those musty walls and that worn furniture. The candles and old-fashioned lamps. I don't understand how anyone can live here. There's something else that's more difficult to understand, Margot. What do you mean? That man that greeted us was Arthur Whittington. But it was not Whittington's voice. <laughs> no, no, Lamont. I saved this wine for special occasions. <laughs> Very special occasions. Well, we're flattered. I suppose my mode of living is a bit mystifying to you, Miss Lane. Mystifying? Well, my staying here in the wilderness, in the house that's almost in ruins, living alone with just the servant. Well, I... I think it might have its advantages, too. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Some people might not understand. I must say, though, Arthur, for a man who's roughing it, you set a highly civilized table. Well, I'm like a Britisher in the tropics, I guess. I still like to maintain that. Master Arthur. What is it, Chester? Why are you interrupting my meal? Master, they are loose again. What? I told you to keep that door locked. I know, I know, but they got out. You fool. They must be someplace near. I keep hearing them. Excuse me, please, Miss Lane. Lamont, I'll be right back. Come along, Catherine. Yes. Oh, don't mind that. Lamont, you know the worst people. What's all this about? I'm not sure, Margot. But it could be those savage dogs. Lamont, do you think they belong to Mr. Whittington? Perhaps. You know, I'm letting you in on a little secret. I wish we could leave here. Well, why, Margot? Well... The way Arthur Whittington acts, the way he talks, the way he looks at you. I don't know, it, it just sends shivers up my back. But we can't leave now. 
Not until the storm is over, anyway. Oh, I certainly wish that we'd never... Come on, do you hear that? Yes. That same sound. They're near the house this time. Why should he have such beasts around here? And how do they get the voice of a cat? That's something we'll find out when Arthur returns. I'll just go... What was that? It was a human voice. It sounded like it came from someplace here in the house. Yes. Oh, I don't like this place, Lamont. When he comes back, I think you should ask for an explanation. I think we should know about those dogs and that moaning, too. Yes, yes when Arthur returns... I, I have returned, oh. Lamont. I didn't hear you come in. What was that about my returning, Lamont? Well, Arthur, uh, both Margot and myself are very curious to learn something about two giant dogs that we encountered on our way in here. Oh, yes, what about them? Well, we wondered just how it was possible that these huge animals had the vocal cords of tiny kittens. Oh, oh, oh Lamont. Oh, I shouldn't have given you that last glass of wine. No, but it's true. I saw and heard them, too. Oh, now, come, Miss Lane. I'd say your imaginations were working overtime. Oh. Who is that, Arthur? What? Well, what are you talking about? Do you hear it? That voice. Someone in this house. Arthur, we've got to... Yes. Yes, I know. Now that you've heard him, I... I'll have to explain his presence. Well, who is it? Why did he cry out like that? Miss Lane, that was a cousin of mine, Frank Harper. He's in one of the rooms off this corridor. He's locked in that room because... Well, because he's not right mentally. Oh. I'm sorry you had to learn about this. Family skeletons are never very pleasant topics. Harper! Yes, you see, my dear cousin Harper. I've gotten free of my shell at last. Oh. And now... Oh. Now, oh. do you hear me? Oh, no, I won't. Uh, help me, you two. Help me. He can't keep me here like this. Look, fool, uh, get back to your room. No, no, let me go. Take it easy, no. Arthur. I must handle this in my own way. No, don't let him send me back. Help me. Shut up, you fool. Come in here with me. No, no. Come on. Oh, Lamont, that was horrible. Yes. And it was also very revealing. What do you mean? The voice of that man, Harper, is the same one that used to belong to Arthur Whittington. Come on. What does all this mean? I don't know yet, Margot. Some way, somehow, that poor creature that rushed in here has been given Whittington's voice. Listen, the animals again. Yes. They're part of this thing, too. This mix up of voices. Oh, Lamont, I wish we could leave here right now. We can't go now, Margot. Not until we learn what's behind all this. Oh, Lamont, what's happening up there? Sounds as if Harp is being beaten. Come on, Margot. We're going to that room. What are you going to do? I want to talk to that boy. Quietly, Margot. We must get down the hall without Whittington hearing us. Oh, what is he doing to him? Quiet. The room is right down here. Are you going in there? Not yet. Not until Whittington leaves. I want to talk to the boy alone. Well, perhaps I'd better wait in the living room. Well? If Whittington wants to know where you are, I can tell him that you've gone out to the car for something. Very well, Margot. Please, Lamont, please don't be long. I won't. The answer to this mystery will be found very quickly by the shadow. <laughs> That'll uh, teach you not to go running around this house. Uh, now you stay here and be quiet, understand? Uh, Either you uh, obey me in the future. Uh, Good night, my dear cousin. Uh, uh, <laughs> Harper. Uh, what was that? I've come here to help you, Mr. Harper. Uh, hearing things. I'm hearing things again. No, you're not. Uh, who speaks to me? I am called the Shadow. Well, I see no one. I'm standing right here beside you. But you can't see me because I've used my hypnotic power to cloud your vision. Uh, I don't understand. Listen to me, Harper. I'm here to help you get out. But first, I must learn something from you. Yes. You, you want to help me? Yes, yes. But tell me, why are you here? Why has your cousin kept you locked in this room? He's jealous of me. He always has been. How did he get you into this house? I came to visit. Just like that couple I saw in the dining room tonight. But I never got out. They never will either. Why do you say that? He will use them just as he used me. For his devilish work. Why was your cousin jealous of you? My voice. Yes? What about your voice? I used to have the voice 
that Arthur had known. I knew it. I knew it. What did he do? How did he accomplish this transference? Came to my house one night. Had dinner. And I, I felt drowsy. I'd been drugged. Yes, then what happened? Well, when I came to, I was... I was in his laboratory. He has a laboratory here in the house? Yes. I was strapped to a table. I fought to get loose, but it wasn't any use. Then he clamped an ether cone on my face. I passed out. And when you came to? When I came to, oh, it must have been days later. I had his voice, this horrible voice of his, and he had mine. And you've been kept prisoner here ever since? Yes, yes, always in this cell. In this same cell. Even the dogs get out, those savage dogs that he gave the voices of little kittens. Oh, I see. That accounts for the dogs. Well, I promise you this, Mr. Harper. You shall be free to leave this cell of yours after tonight. Is that you, Lamont? No. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Whittington. Where is Lamont? Well, he went out to the car for something. He should be right back. I see. Well, perhaps you'd like me to show you your room. Why, we're waiting. Oh, no, thanks. That's all right. I'll wait for him. I'd rather you come with me now, if you will. I have several chores to perform, and I'd just like you to know where your room is. Oh, very well. Just down this hall, Miss Lane. Thank you. I think you'll be very interested in what I have to show you. This will be your room. Won't you step inside? All right. Is there a light that I can... What are you doing I'm just making sure that no one will disturb us, Miss Lane. Why did you lock that door? You see. Now we'll put on this lamp. There. It's wrong. What is this place? This is my laboratory, Miss Lane. My workshop, where I conduct my experiments. Let me out of here and unlock that door at once. I'm sorry, but you're staying here. You don't let me out. I'll call for help. Lamont will hear me. Why don't you call? Lamont! Lamont! Before you continue, Miss Lane... You might be interested to learn that these walls are completely soundproof. What are you doing? Why have you got me here? You're going to help them, Miss Lane. Help you? Yes. They're going to be a party to an experiment of mine. My greatest experiment. What do you mean? You'll learn soon enough. First, I'm afraid I must strap you to this table. No! Don't keep away from me! Nothing such an obstinate fool. No, you do that! Stop pounding on that door! Let go of me! You come with me now. Oh! On this table. No, you can't do this. There you are. Let me go. Let me go. Now, if you strap to hold you securely. Don't let me loose. There we are. Oh, oh. Now. Now you can struggle or scream as much as you wish. I'd particularly recommend the scream. It may be your last chance to use it. What do you mean? This experiment of mine has to do with your voice, Miss Lane. That's my work, you know. The transference of voices. What are you saying? You've already heard two of my examples. The dogs with the voices of little kittens. And my cousin, Frank Harper. And it's true. What Lamont thought is true. Oh, so he guessed my secret, eh? Well, he'll never live to tell it. Oh, no. You will survive, though. But you won't be able to tell it either, Miss Lane. What are you going to do to me? I'll show you. The answer to your question is in this box. Let me open it. There we are. Meow. A cat? Yes, a cat. Have you ever seen a more beautiful cat? She's pure poison, aren't you, girl? What has that cat got to do with me? A great deal. And giving her your vocal cords. No. No, you don't know what you're doing. You're lame. Not at all. I merely have a great hatred, Miss Lane, for the entire human race. They ruined me. Their heartless cruelty blighted my entire life. But animals. Ah. They are different. Aren't you, my little pet? You can't mean what you say. But I do. Lady knows that, don't you, girl? She knows that after tonight, we'll be able to converse. Be able to tell one another all the things that we've kept stored no, up. You can't, you can't do this. And you, Miss Lane, as befits your sex, you will have the vocal cords of a cat. No, no. Now I think we can proceed with these. No, keep away, keep away. There will be no pain. This Keitha will take no. care of that. Are you ready? No, please. No, she isn't ready, Mr. Whittington. Who is that? Who spoke? I spoke to you. Who are you? I am called the Shadow. 
Don't try to find me. I've made myself quite invisible to your eyes. What are you doing here? Why are you interrupting my work? I've come to put an end to your work. I'm here to free that young woman. Oh, no, no, you won't. I'm not frightened by someone I can't even see. Put down that either. I'm going ahead with my work. No, no. You may not be able to see me, Mr. Whittington, but I think you'll feel this. Why, you... Now I'm releasing this girl. And then I'm holding you until I can get the police out here. They'll be very interested in your experiment. <laughs> you think you can keep me here, do you? The light is put out the light. Now, Mr. Shadow, I am invisible too. And I'm getting out of here right now. To stop it. He's going through those cases. Come back here, Whittington. <laughs> Come and get this shadow. Come on, Margot. He's not getting away. Here he is crossing the lawn. He's evidently trying to get to our car. Oh, 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 oh. Those two figures running after Whittington. It's the dog, the giant dog. Oh, they're chasing him, Lamont. Oh, they're trying to pick him. Whittington, the guy. is in good hands. I don't mind saying I'm certainly glad to be leaving that place, Lamont. You do know such interesting people. Well, you can't say they're dull. No. <laughs> Did you tell the police about the dogs? Yes. They've destroyed them. And Whittington's body is being removed to town. You know something, Lamont? What? Whenever I see an alley cat from now on, I'll think to myself, there, but for the grace of the shadow, go I. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.